So we are here in Johnson Valley in the June Kicker Trophy Truck. This is the unlimited version. I saw Jimmy Broadbent driving this truck and having a lot of trouble with it. And I have to tell you, I really thought it was going to be a massive handful when I tried it. And when I had a go, I had, well, these times that I'm going to put up on the, on the screen. My first finish was under five minutes and my second finish was just over five minutes. Uh, I was really surprised by that until I thought about it and I realized I've actually kind of been uh, driving these things for years kind of obsessively so it kind of makes sense and so maybe I've even got something like really maybe I've got some insight to share not I'm gonna say really helpful or really great or amazing but some insight to share so first of all we're gonna do a bit of a lap of one of these, and this is going to be in the stadium truck version, actually. This is, this is the long one. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick lap of this. I'm going to explain a few principles, and then I'm going to take, uh, take those principles, and we're going to do the long race that's really hard. Okay, so first principle, generally speaking, you want a short shift. Um, what that means is you don't want to wait until you're right at the top of your rev range before you shift. You want to usually have a bit of headroom in the rev, in the, the rev range. Um, and that, there's a number of reasons for that. Number one, uh, you're not gonna run out of torque. Uh, you're gonna run out of grip first, for the most part. In first and second gear, generally speaking, your problem is finding grip. It's not finding torque. It's not finding power. You've got heaps and heaps of that. Um, and then there, I, I, I shift into third gear in the air to make sure that I can keep spinning up the wheels because spinning up the wheels will raise the nose. Um, basically just, you know, wheels spin one way, car spins the other. It's just an equal and opposite reaction thing that keeps the nose high. And it's very important to keep the nose high uh, because that's how you want to land. You want to land either flat or rear wheels first. You do not want to land front wheels first. You, you don't want to run into rocks either. Um, okay, well, we'll just reset that. We'll reset. It's fine. Um, but yeah, this thing has a, a, a fluid clutch, I think it is. I'm not actually sure, but it's got a, a torque converter that basically keeps you, like, putting out a huge amount of power in either first or second gear, even when you're going slow. So first gear is generally used for starting from a standstill or for uh, really spinning up the wheels and, and getting rotation at low speed. Uh, if you don't need to do either of those things, generally you want to stay in second gear. And then um, you can see as we come up to this jump here, I'm going to shift into third before I really need to, so that when I jump, the wheels spin up and that keeps the nose high. You always want to land either flat if you can, ideally flat is good, but if you can't land flat, you want to land on your rear wheels first rather than on your front wheels first. Landing on your front wheels first is bad for so many reasons. Number one, you can break your front wheels. Uh, number two, it's unstable. Even if your wheels are perfectly straight, um, they'll tend to destabilize you and spin you out. Uh, if you land on them first. Um, so yeah, landing on the rear wheels first tends to stabilize the car. Oh, there we go. Front wheels coming down first. That wasn't too bad. It's okay if you do it, but it, you know, if you do it too much, you're generally speaking gonna, you know, get destabilized. So there we go. That was a three-star time. That was a 107.691. That was my best one so far. So that's lovely. Uh, and now we're gonna head off to the main event. So we're gonna go to Calamity Peak Sprint. Okay, so here we go. Starting in first, obviously, because we're starting from a standstill. And uh, around 80, 90, 100, we're going to short shift into second. Um, this is a nice flat area, but we still want to be able to manage the bumps with lots of headroom in the rev range. Uh, again, short shift into third. You want the wheels to spin up whenever they leave the ground. And in off-road racing, that was a bit of a lag spike. In off-road racing, they can leave the ground virtually whenever. Now, nice and... I'm not hitting the brakes as we uh, are in the air. I only hit the brakes as we hit the ground there. Um, and... First gear, spin the rear wheels to get the back to kick out and lose traction. You want to lose traction around those sections because you don't want to roll the car. Um, the racer instinct, hang on, I'll talk about that in a second. We're just surfing across the whoops here in third gear. This uh, speed could be done in second gear, but again, headroom in the rev range. You want to keep the nose high and just be, just be skipping across the top of these. Um, lots of little, little jumps. You never want the, the nose to dip. And if you're hitting the rev limiter, that nose can dip without any warning. So just a bit of a cut the corner, go a bit wide there, 
and nice and slow for this section because it's very treacherous and lots of revs again to break traction and stop yourself from rolling we can cut the corner here not a big problem um, this is all very tight and technical which this car is bad at so just feel free to it's off-road you don't have to go on the road obviously um, now here we come to a very technical section okay um, now again we're talking about racer instincts as you leave the ground here you're gonna feel very out of control because it is uh, a very very tight, very rocky, very bouncy section uh, where you don't feel like you're in control. It's very awkward, but the way to deal with this is just, again, keep even pressure on the accelerator. Don't accelerate the car too much and go too fast, but just make sure that the wheels are spinning up whenever you leave the ground and you're likely to land a bit better that time. Um, of course, sometimes you're gonna land wheels first. You can't always help the front wheels first. You can't always help that, but uh, you can mitigate the issues. Whoa. Oh, see that went I went a bit too nose high there and I slammed on the brakes to bring the nose back down um, so nice and even pressure be very easy to crash here uh, don't worry about going too fast there really is a limit to how fast you can go you just it's about managing the attitude of the car it's not about uh, going fast right now smooth is fast here um, slow is smooth smooth is fast and it's not very smooth there but you want to keep it as smooth as you can okay so now we've got a, a high speed section coming up I think um, okay, now we've got a bit of a flat section, we can just plant the throttle, slow down here, uh, don't shift into first, there's no need for it. Um, you want a nice even amount of pressure, uh, traction and, and, and power coming out of there, and that's what uh, second gear will give you. Third gear over these jumps, again, revs and, and nose high, revs and nose high. Now here we, we don't want to go too fast, but we do want revs. There we go, we can just jump across that little canyon. And now we are whoop surfing again. Um, so yeah, again, just talking about uh, racer instincts. Uh, as you go around tight corners, the racer instinct is to uh, let off the throttle and brake and get maximum sideways traction to the wheels, right? Because that's what that does. If you're not accelerating or braking, your wheels have their full traction uh, available to corner. And that's what you should do in a lot of racetracks. You should always have a section in a really tight corner where you're, where you're just like, just coasting a bit to get the maximum turn out of it. Um, or that, that's often something you need to do, uh, but not in these cars. You don't want to do that here. You want to brake traction and get the rear wheels spinning. Um, get the back to slide out. If I hadn't done that just then, I mean, that wasn't a great turn, but if I hadn't been uh, spinning the wheels to get the back to slide out, I probably would have rolled it just there. Um, so yeah, it's another, a lot of stuff you need to unlearn from road racing that in off-road racing is essential. And a lot of it's about managing those, that traction, managing the wheel speed, uh, managing your attitude in the air. Okay, so as we come up to this section, there's a section up here. You're gonna find these little jumps. I'm just gonna plant the throttle as we go over the jump just to, just to keep the nose high. Um, there's a section here where I tend to crash and it's right near the end, it's really tragic. Uh, yeah, just paying lots of attention in this section because I don't want to lose this run. It's been pretty good so far. Um, hitting the brakes here because that bit there, that's really, uh, what do you call it? Deceptive. Yeah, this, this corner here, this one wants to roll you. Um, okay, and uh, we're just coming up to the end now. Please don't roll it, don't bin it. What's our time looking like? 4.38. Holy shit, this was a good run. Uh, anyway, just uh, planning it across here. 446. That is my best run so far. So yeah, um, I'm not going to pretend like that was easy. Uh, I did take a lot of attempts to get back into it this time. Actually, you know what? Whoop! Jump. Woof. Um, it was really fascinating. I, I was really expecting to have a lot more trouble with this than I did. I've been obsessively driving off-road trucks for like years and years now, uh, in simulators, of course. Uh, and so maybe I do know something about it. Maybe I can actually share this. And I really hope this helps people. Hang on. I'm just gonna get up to speed and try to turn a corner and show you what happens if you don't use the accelerator. Whoop, see that? All I did there was just lift off the accelerator and we immediately crashed. And that's just what happens. Um, plus it's BMNG, you can't not have a crash. You can't not have a crash. Yeah, that's, that's the right number of negatives. You can't, you gotta crash, it's BMNG. So I thought I'd also uh, just quickly just come here to Car Jump Arena 
and show you something about attitude control in the air. Uh, so we're just going to shift into third again, keeping headroom in the red rev range. Keeping headroom in the rev range. Throttling up. We still nose down quite a bit, but managed to, to actually land it. Front right brake fading, front left brake fading, and we're in the wall. And we're in the water. Sweet. Actually, I don't even need any gearing at all. I'm just going to roll down, and we'll see what happens when you hit the brakes in the air. Do, do 200 Ks and hit the brakes. Complete nosedive. Now, it can actually get worse than that because depending on what's happening as you leave the ramp, if you're hitting the brakes as you leave the ramp, you get an even worse nosedive. If you're hitting the accelerator as you leave the ramp, you don't get a nosedive. Because again, if you look, when the wheels are touching the ground and spinning, you see how it... Well, actually, yeah, you can just see it on the road here. Let's just do that then. Because if you watch, when I hit the accelerator, see the nose comes up and then I hit the brakes and the nose dives down. And you get that a lot in trophy trucks. Um, and that is something that will also affect you in the air. That tendency to lift the nose on the ground just because of the, the torque being created by the wheels against the ground, that will tend to raise your nose. And in fact, one thing you can do, we'll see how nose high we can do, is you can actually hit the brakes just before the, the jump and then hit the accelerator. And look how nose high we went there. We actually uh, tapped the back on the ground. That's a beautiful little front frill. That was nice. Okay. Oh. And again, low speed in a tight corner. The car just wants to roll. I don't think I've ever seen that plate come off. Now we'll see how badly we can get the, the front to flip. If I hit the brakes just as it leaves the lip, whoom, right over. That was pretty bad. Still survivable. But yeah, you don't want that to happen in a race. And let's just, um, let's just do one completely neutral. I won't touch anything and we'll see what happens. Now I'm thinking this is probably, one of the things that will happen here is the front will unload and then the back will unload and you've got just the back suspension pushing for just a fraction of a second and that does tend to dip the nose, so you need to counteract that. Uh, so again we can counteract that with, uh, with throttle basically is the short answer. If I hit the throttle just, there we go. If I hit the brake and then the throttle, look at that, nice and high. Now I can actually dab the brake to bring the nose back down. We've got a beautiful little flat landing there. Ew! Beautiful! Oh, okay, we'll crash it. Oof. Yeah! Let's see how far we can jump this thing. Woo! Oh no, see again, I was at the top of the rev limiter and there was nothing I could do, just dip the nose down. Ooh, that was a, that was a brutal hit on the front. Ooh. Ooh, I always like to look at the, the passenger cab. And that didn't look good. I mean, I don't think it was too compromised, but that dash moved quite a lot. Yeah, those pedals have been compressed quite a bit. That, 
I don't think that that we that that footwell is meant to look like that. You'd probably you'd probably break some ankles doing that. Ugh. <sighs> yeah, don't be like this guy. Don't buzz the limiter in the air. Don't hit the brakes in the air, and uh, you'll probably be okay. But maybe not. It's it's still a very dangerous uh, type of type of driving to do. Okay, bye. Six guns sell stocks, sell diamonds, sell rocks, sell water to a fish, sell the time to a clock.